hello everyone we will continue the topic number range and in the previous videos we finished with the logic part we finished with all the steps which is required to achieve our requirement so whenever you are getting this kind of requirement majorly we have always always three steps you need to firstly create a number range object through snro transaction code we need to assign the intervals to that number range object and at the last we need to call the function module number underscore get underscore next into our program or we can say whatever if whatever the program we are using in that program we need to call the function module number get next now in this video we will learn this function module into the debugging mode because the major focus is we understood that these are the various steps but how this function module is working how this function module is giving us the next number so in this video we will understand this function module in the debugging mode or if some confusion is there it will be automatically cleared because ultimately at the last the whole game is of this function module only now i will put a breakpoint i will just run this program i will go for some input suppose i am giving the input suppose i will give my name suppose i will put some age i will go for some address suppose i will go for execute I will go to desktop three, most preferable desktop. All three are obligatory, so I pass three things. And have you seen, I, am, I have not passed the employee ID. Employee ID will be generated by this function module. Next number will be generated by this function module, and I will use that number. Now, what we are passing to this function module, we are passing number range number. We are passing the number range object and it will give us the next available number. I am doing F5 because if I want to go inside this function module, I will do F5. Now you can see I did F5, but I have not gone inside the function module. This is the event load of program. And many times I told during that debugging, if you lost somewhere, you can use F7 key to return. If I will do F7, you can see I'm in the function module number get next. Yes. Now we can start with the debugging. And whenever I will debug this function module, you will realize the whole game is of two tables. What are those two tables? T N R O table and N R I V table. In this table, we have the number range object, and in this table, we have the number range interval. Because ultimately, whatever we did through S N R O transaction code, it went to these two tables, and in the function module. SAP has written the logic to take the data from these two tables itself. So in this function module number get next, you will see SAP is using ultimately these two tables. Now, firstly, SAP is checking. Whatever the number range object you passed, it is into TNRO table or not? Yes, because this is the first step. If we are passing a wrong number range object, Sai sub RC will be other than zero and we are will get a error message. Suppose I will go to SC38 transaction code. Suppose by mistake you passed the wrong number range object. Then in that case what will happen? Suppose you pass the wrong number range object. So system will go to this function module. It will not be able to find in the TNRO table and size sub RC will be zero and we will get the error message. Now we passed a right number range object. What is the number range object? ZEMP ID. It will check into TNRO table. Do we have a number range object TNRO? Yes. I will show you the table. 
T N R. If I will go to the contents, Z E M P I D. Yes, we have the number range object. Now, if you see, this query is successful. Size sub R C is zero. So first table done. Now system will move on to the next table because after the number range object, what is the next step? Number range interval. So system will go to which table? N R I V table. I will scroll down and we will directly move on to the logic. If I will scroll down, I will scroll down. Now I will come here. Just to recall when we created the number range object, but we have chosen, we have chosen no buffering. We have not chosen main memory buffering. We have not chosen parallel buffering. We have chosen no buffering. If I will show you SNRO transaction code. At that time, we but I put the stress that we are not going for no buffering, no buffering. So here system has written, you are going for no buffering case or you are going for main memory buffering. We are going for no buffering, no buffering. So I'll put a breakpoint here and I'm doing F8. Now, if I want to go inside this sub routine, but I will do F5. Just before I will go inside the subroutine, just see here. Read underscore NRIV. Name itself is suggesting. We will read the data from which table? NRIV table. And what we will change? Number, number. Just see what is number. What is number? Number is the number which we will get from this function module. Employee ID 1, 2, 3, 4. So whenever this subroutine will execute, yes, it will take the data from NRIV table. And yes, in the return, it will give us the next available number. I am doing F5. And I'm now I'm inside the subroutine. Now just see. Now we are not, it's not main memory buffering. So system went to else part, else part. And just see here, SAP has written the query from which particular table, NRIV table. This is our number range object. Yes, this is our number range object. We have not taken any sub object. And what is the number range number? Zero one. We took zero one. If I will go for this, you can see it is zero one. It is zero one, zero one. Or you can understand number range serial number. So SAP is putting all this data. This is where condition. And SAP is going for which table? NRIV table. Now, if I will show you NRIV table, ultimately this is whole understanding of these two table. SAP is using these two table into this function module. I will go to contents. Z E M P I D and what is number range number zero one. So we will get the from value to value everything we will get. Now if I will simply execute this query and you can see SAP is putting the data into this work area. If I will open this work area, does it has everything? Yes, it has everything. Your number range object number range number. This is from value to value, which we gave that our number will generate between these two. Now just see here, number range level, it is zero. It is zero as of now. Now, if I will show you where is number range level, just see here, number range status or number range level one and the same thing. If I will show you table also, NRIV table. Have you seen we have a column here, number range level. If I will go to back button, it is clearly saying it is number range status. It is zero as of now, zero. Because till now, no number is generated. So it is zero, zero. Whenever we will generate, it will be update. One, two, three, four. Anyways, whenever I will show you, you will understand. If you want to see what is the last number generated, you will be always, always able to see here. If you want to see in SNRO transaction code, and if you want to check in table, it will be here. As of now, it is zero.
Now system has written the logic. Now I will scroll down and I will show you where SAP has written the logic to generate the next number. I will scroll. I will scroll. I'll just go up. Yes, here SAP has written. I am doing F8. Now just see here. Now I am doing F6. I am doing F6. Just see what SAP has done. What is your from value? What is your from value? One. This is our one. It means whatever the numbers will generate, it will start from one. And what is the quantity? At a time we are generating how many number? One. We are only generating one number at a time. And SAP has written minus one. So one plus one, two. Two minus one, one. So what is LV underscore level? One. It means first time but SAP will generate first time SAP will generate the number one. So this zero will be replaced by one. Now just see here, when I entered into the subroutine, I told you that SAP is fetching the data. SAP in this particular subroutine, we will fetch the data from NRIV table. And what we will change number. This number is PV underscore number. That's not a thing. So it means this LV underscore level, whatever the level generated, status generated. So SAP will pass the value to PV underscore number. Now, if I will show you, you can see at the last SAP is assigning the value to what PV underscore number. I am doing F8 and you can see what is PV underscore number. One. I am doing F7 so that I can back to original position. Now you can see what is the number one. And is this the exporting parameter of the function module? Yes, this is the exporting parameter. So what the number generated one. Now I am doing F7. Now I return to my original program. And what is the number? Number is one. Now, if I will go for again, now what is the employee ID generated one? This is the employee name. This is the employee age. This is the employee address. We passed everything to this particular work area. And see, we have not written the, we have not passed the employee ID from the screen. We are generating the employee ID. Now we are inserting the data to database table. And you can see, what is the value of size sub RC? Size sub RC value is zero. Now, if I will do F8, we got the message employee ID inserted successfully. Now, if I will show you our table. Firstly, I will show you employee table. Is the one inserted successfully? You can see this table. I will give employee ID one. I will execute. You can see employee ID one pass to database tip. Now the most, most important point. Just see here, numbering status was zero previously. If I will go to back button, now it is refreshed to what one. If someone asks you, tell me what is the last number generated, you can simply, simply go for this. Or you can check in that table also. This is NRIV table. If I will refresh, you can see now what is the number age level one. Next time SAP will use this because SAP has to add now one plus one, two, two plus one, three. First time, yes, SAP has not done anything because that was the first number. Next time it will add one. Now, if I will show you the second scenario, that will again give you a add on. Suppose I'm going for some different name, suppose this time. Suppose I will put Abhishek. I'll put some age. Suppose I will go for some location address. I will execute. Now I will show you how SAP is adding the number to the previous number. I will go inside the function module. This is not function module. I will do F7. Firstly, it will check TNRO. Okay, it is done. Now I will go to no buffering. I will do F8. 
I'm doing F5. Now SAP is fetching the data from the table. This NR, NRIV table. Just if I will show you the work area. Have you seen what is the number range level now? One. Previously it was zero. So zero plus one, one. Now one plus one will become two. Now we will simply move where SAP has written the logic. If I will simply, simply go up. This is the logic which SAP has written. Now I will show you. Now just see how SAP will do. Now just see what SAP is doing. What is the number range, previous number range level? One. How many you want to generate? One. So one plus one, two. Now you can see the level is two. Now SAP is simply, simply passing this to PV underscore number. If I will just see, it should not be the case. Okay. I put a breakpoint at different location. Okay. I'm just doing F7. Now you can see, but the number SAP generated two. This is the changing parameter of this subroutine. Number is the exporting parameter of this function module. Now here it is importing. So what is your number? Two. Now this two, we have not passed the employee ID from the screen. We are generating. Now you can see we are inserting this to database table. Now insertion is success. Zero. Now if I will show you database table. This is our database table. Refresh. If I will go for, I will remove one. Now you can see employee ID one, employee ID two. Now the most important is of NRIB. If I will go to back interval, have you seen what is the number in status two? Now you can check here also. If I will refresh two. So next time as we will take two, two plus one, three, three plus one, four. So this is how this function form is working. Extremely important from the understanding perspective because sometimes we do everything, but we don't know how that particular thing is working. So what is the summary of this particular video? Extremely important from the understanding perspective. In this function module, I explained you number get next in the full detail. Ultimately, this function module is going for two tables only, TNRO and NRIV. TNRO, it is checking number range object, and NRIV IV is checking the number range interval. And this number range status or level column is playing a vital role because ultimately it will tell us what the last number generated. So I explained you each and everything in the debugging mode. First time it is zero, next time it is one. Then I showed you again, next time it is two. And I showed you the data in our database table, how NRIV table is updating with the last number, which is generating. So this is all about our number range in SAP. So that's it in this video. Thank you.